So Team Keep It Clean, in this episode, we're going to take a look at two very different views when it comes to the Ravens and their wide receiver core. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Growth is such an essential part of anything that we do in life, especially when it comes to things that we invest our time in because you never want to become too stagnant. And that's probably one of the biggest reasons why I use Skillshare. I'm always looking for ways to improve the quality of these videos. And Skillshare provides an entire catalog of ad-free classes, so I can do just that. Let me take you through it so I can show you just how simple it is. So you go to Skillshare, sign in, and search for the type of skill you're looking to work on. Or you can just search the specific creator's name. For me, I'm always looking to up the quality of the videos, so I search MKBHD for Marcus Brown Lee's videos on how to do just that. So from there, you choose the class you want and you start exploring new ways to improve your craft. And just like with any of the creators that are featured on Skillshare, they take you through their different methods and strategies on how they became successful and show you how to do it. And just to give you a little added motivation, the first 1,000 people that use the link in the description to join Skillshare will receive a free one month trial so you can discover even more ways to take yourself to that next level how about those ravens wide receivers team keep it clean at this point of the season after three weeks how y'all feeling about rashad bateman and devin duvernay who have both been doing their thing uh and it's been better than expected for me especially for devin duvernay um and rashad bateman it's like he don't have many catches but he got a nice little chunk of yards and then of course the big touchdowns which we all love so much um so they've been doing their thing Outside of those two, though, it's... Anyway, first question came from my guy, Kevin S. And then we're going to have another question that kind of views it in an opposite way from my guy, Gold Morano. But let's get into it. First question from Kevin. He said, Aang Graven, I told you Ravens didn't need to go out and get a number one wide receiver. I know you were saying it would be nice to get one, but I felt like it would have taken away from Duvernay and Bateman. See, my thing, and then he said, uh, they need this year to develop. Now, next year, they need to go after one in the draft or free agency. But the development of the wide receivers we have is a must this year. I get what you're saying. But my reasoning for them going out and getting somebody who was that guy right now was because of timing. Timing is of the essence. I don't, in my opinion, it, it wasn't. This year wasn't a year to be like, all right, you know what? Now let's really take a deep dive into the development of our own wide receivers. Lamar's on the fifth year option. He's on the fifth year option. So I, I really didn't feel like, all right, well, well now let's, let, let's really see what these receivers got. And you could have still seen what the receivers had, even if you would have went, went out and got somebody who was like that. And, be, and, and that would have upped the quality of the wide receivers that much more. So imagine that. Imagine what's happening right now if it happened that much more with other guys, too. And then think, the wide receivers, it's, it's only been Rashad Bateman and Devin Duvernay. It hasn't been anybody else. It hasn't been James Prochet. He's been hurt. So, boom, you would have had somebody to, to, to take over in his absence. Um, Tylen Wallace. Uh, Tylen Wallace hasn't really had much opportunity. He ain't really been out there too much. Uh, Demarcus Robinson. See, Demarcus Robinson, he's been doing his thing. Um, he's, he, he definitely had, uh, big impacts because in week one, he had this huge pass interference call that set up a touchdown. Um, in week two, he had a touchdown, I believe. And then in week three, uh, did he have a touchdown? No, nah, he didn't have a touchdown in week three, but he, it is, it, uh, we ain't expecting to be every single game making plays. We wish he would be. I mean, Devin Duvin, they had bitches, so shout out to Duv, but if you would have gotten another guy, then you probably wouldn't have gotten Demarcus Robinson. But still, um, my thing was just about the quality and the timing of the quality because of Lamar. What, what, I just wanted his job and everybody else's job to be made that much easier. Now, again, the receivers, well, the, the top two, and, and Demarcus Robinson too. They've been doing their thing for the most part. Um, so I'm, I'm happy about it. I'm happy about it. I just want to see it continue. And I think, um, especially with, with really with both of them, I'm about to say with Rashad Bateman, but we just want to see them involved a bit more. I know, um, and of course, game by game, things are going to change. So I ain't tripping about the week three game because in week three, like they hadn't had a catch. The receivers hadn't had a catch in a long time, like in a, throughout the first half. I think they didn't have a catch until the second half. But 
I just um I, that that was my biggest thing. More options for this offense. More options for Lamar Jackson to throw to. Because again, him being able to throw like this, this is no surprise, man. This is no shocker. It's no like big revelation. Oh my goodness, Lamar Jackson can throw the ball. No, we knew Lamar Jackson could throw the ball. Analysts and stuff try to tell you that he couldn't. But people that have watched him, they know that he can throw the ball. So that's old news. But I, I just that was it. I just wanted his job to be made uh, that much easier. Now, on the flip side, <laughs> next next question came from my guy Gold Morano. He said, "We still don't have that dude." Engraving, you watched game uh, the game and have now analyzed the performance at each position. Rashad Bateman went four for fifty nine, but missed out on two critical passes that ended drives that had high probability of turning into scores. Uh, yes, Harbaugh argued that his wide receiver didn't have full possession when the Patriot defender knocked the ball out of Bateman's hands, but I believe that he should have been able to hold on to the ball in that situation because he had both hands on the ball. Uh, Rashad had two hands on the ball in both situations. These are factors that enables opposing teams to keep to creep back into games into the fourth quarter. Minus the miscues, Bateman would have gone over 100 yards in New England. Yeah, he would have, and um, it was it was a yeah he didn't have full possession, uh, and that was it was a drop kind of, yeah it was a drop. It was a drop, knockout, but he, yeah, he should have caught that. Because it wasn't like it was a ball that was too high. It wasn't like it was a ball that was too low. It hit him. It hit him right right there. I didn't mean to hit the mic, my apologies. But, it, yeah, it should have been a catch. But, again, my, my thing with um, the receivers uh, and just really players, because Mark Andrews, he ain't a receiver, but if you're going to drop the ball, okay, cool. As long as you make it more plays, then you miss. That That's my biggest thing. Now, of course, in crucial situations, you don't want drop. I mean, you don't want drops at all, really. Um, but that's just something that that's just something that you you, you just don't want to see because um, you don't want games to like you talked about. You don't want teams to creep back into a game because of a crucial drop or because of a drop period. Because those are chain movers, those are chunk plays, those are, those are huge first downs, and then sometimes potential touchdowns. And then there was the um, the uh, the deep pass. Up the right seam uh, Where Lamar, he threw it And Rashad Bateman just missed it And he could have dove for it uh, And possibly got it Maybe Lamar could have put like a, a Hair less on it um, But I, it looked like To me that was more Bateman than Lamar But I can understand somebody said that was more Lamar Than Bateman, but if Bateman would have really Like extended it, so I, I think he could have got that But it's water under the bridge But hopefully uh, that water remains under the bridge, and, and they don't have too much of those miscues. I mean, you ain't going to hit every single pass. You ain't going to make every single catch. But um, plays like that, you just you, – you, 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 you miss – when you miss out on them, you just uh, – in games like the Patriots game, it obviously didn't change the impact – I mean, the outcome of the game. But those plays against a different team, um, and you miss on those plays, whether it's a missed throw, whether it's a – Interception, whether it's a uh, a drop, whether it's not extending yourself to make a catch, wh whatever it may be, those against even better teams, you can't miss out on that stuff because it could change everything. But anyway, uh, he said we love Rashad and I suspect that he'll have a very bright future in the NFL. But would you agree that coming up empty uh, at key moments has to diminish Lamar's trust in our budding wide receiver at least a little? Um, I don't think so. Simply because of what we were talking about earlier If if you're making more plays Than you're missing Then I, I don't think that Lamar is going to be like Alright well I ain't going to this guy no more Like for instance um, Again with, with him and Miles Boykin they, they were just never on the same page at all So that's why it was tough for Miles Boykin Because everything that he did Good or bad It mattered, it mattered so much more Than it did with other receivers Like with Hollywood With Sammy Watkins for a time Tiny weeny bit um, Because he got a lot less opportunities Than other guys And that was just really throughout uh, his career with the Ravens And since he got far less opportunities Than other guys Then everything was emphasized that much more So for somebody in that situation If Miles made a big catch It's like okay let's go Okay maybe Lamar might throw to him again But if Miles made a big drop Or there was a miscue Or he ran the wrong route Or something like that Then for somebody like that I could see Lamar being like uh, Yeah I I'm not, I'm not going to try it again but for somebody like Hollywood, uh, who had a couple drops last year, last season, and I know there's going to be somebody in the comments like, oh, well, it was more than a couple, buddy. But anyway, for Hollywood, um, he, uh, Lamar kept going to him because he trusted him. 
He trusted him. And and despite him having a drop here or there, even touchdown drops, like in the Lions game and in the Chargers game, um, and in whatever other games too. Uh, I can't say the Steelers because that was Tyler Huntley, but with Lamar in Hollywood, uh, even with Hollywood, have a, Lamar will still go right back to him. With Mark Andrews, we've seen it this year. With Mark Andrews, he's had drops, I think. I want to say every game. But Mark Andrews, what he does, what he's been doing this year, he'll have a drop in the first quarter, and it'll be like, oh, come on, Mark. But then he will make up for it in a major way throughout the rest of the game. Lamar will keep on going back to him. So I, as far as the trust thing that you talked about, I think it all just depends on who it is. So that's it. Uh, and as long as they're making more plays than they're missing. Um that more passes are possibly being forced to Andrews due to that lack of full trust. Nah, I don't think so. Uh, we may not have seen the best that Bateman has to offer as of yet, but would you agree that contrary to what some fans may believe, that Lamar still doesn't have that dude at wide receiver one, that beast who could change the outcome of games with one catch? I think with um with Rashad Bateman, he could be developing to, in, into that. I can't say he's that right now, but I can't say he is slowly – seem to be developing in, into that. And it's going to take time. It's going to take time. I don't think Rashad Bateman has, has established himself, oh, he is that guy, a wide receiver right now. He can be, and he seems to be on his way. I don't think he's there yet, but he's definitely on the way. Um, so it's just a matter of continue making plays. That's it. Keep making plays. Keep stacking good games. Keep stacking big plays. Um, and, again, it, and that will just that'll make things much better. Uh, for the Baltimore Ravens, and he could possibly, if he keeps stuff up, he could possibly end up being the first Ravens wide receiver to receive, the first Ravens drafted wide receiver to receive a real second contract, a real one. You know, nobody ain't nobody got no real one yet. Chris Moore, he was drafted by the Ravens, but then after his deal ran out, uh, his rookie contract ran out, he got signed, re-signed to like a one-year deal. But I mean, like a, a a real multi-year contract. Well, it's early. He's only in year two. But as long as he keeps on trending up, then he could be well on his way. Uh, and he said it's likely being underutilized. Will we only see Isaiah only be featured when Snoop is under center? Oh no no no. We we don't want to. We don't want to see no Snoop under center. Unless it's a blowout. That, that then okay, okay cool. But we don't want to see Snoop under center. Uh, but we're likely. Um, they've been trying here and there. Um, a little bit And all the, 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 the preseason hype uh, On Likely uh, I don't know I think he got, got to just settle down And they got to just find ways to get him involved They had, they had him uh, They threw him that shovel pass The other day um, So that was cool uh, And then in the Was it the Dolphins game Where he caught it Like three passes I, th I think it was the Dolphins game But um, I think his time will come Eventually uh, but it's it's one of those things that slowly but surely, like the preseason had a lot of our expectations for likely. Like, oh, okay, yeah, let's go, let's get it, baby. But it just ain't been there yet. See, and that's see that's not comparing him to Miles Boyd, even though they both were number eighty. But I wonder, and I I haven't really noticed it, so I can't really say for sure. But I wonder if some of the miscues between Lamar Jackson and Isaiah Likely, some of the drops. I want. I wonder if that may contribute to Lamar. Maybe seeing Isaiah like they'd be like, oh, let me look somewhere else. But I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. So I, I. I haven't like seen a play where Isaiah likely is wide open and Lamar might look somewhere. I. I don't know. I think somebody mentioned that they may have seen it, but I. I. I me myself, I don't know. Um. He said Devin Duvernay has made the most of few receiving opportunities based off of what he has shown. Should he be getting more than two to three targets per game? I mean, yeah, you would. You would certainly hope so. Because, yeah, I like, I like how you put that. He's made the most of his few receiving opportunities. Devin Duvernay been doing his thing. When, when the ball comes his way, especially those, those, uh, those uh, back of the end zone touchdowns. Oh, man. Like, and Devin Duvernay, it's like with him, he ain't been getting no crazy uh, separation. Devin Duvernay, well, he will have that. That cornerback will be all over him, draped all over him, and then he'll still make the catch. So shout out to Duv. And then he said, uh, in addition to getting the run game cooking, with spreading passes more evenly between Bateman, Duvernay, Devont uh, Demarcus Robinson, uh, likely, I, I almost said Devontae Robinson. I'm, I'm over here. Devontae Parker, and he haunted my mind. Anyway, uh, with spreading passes more evenly between Bateman, Duvernay, Demarcus Robinson, Isaiah Likely, Oliver, Boyle, Andrews, and Dobbins make the offense less predictable and keep defenses on their heels, or should we have two wide receivers who have at least 10 receptions per game? It all just depends. I, I can't. 
yeah, you want you certainly want different guys, and the more guys involved, the better uh, to keep defenses on their heels. But it all just depends on the game. If you got a wide receiver that's just doing his thing in the game, and he ain't being stopped, you don't stop giving it to him. If he keep making plays, you keep having him make plays. Um, so it, it it all just depends on the actual game. I can't say oh for all right every game it got to be this 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 all them guys, but because it's gonna be you got to keep rolling with the hot hand. That's my point. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Shout out to Graven.